Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and welcome to Overwatch Central, and welcome to another Omen by HP video. Omen by HP are of course the official PC providers of the Overwatch League, and an official proud sponsor of Overwatch Contenders, which again we'll be having a look at today. The Overwatch League will be starting up next month though, so I can't wait to get in deep with some of the new games, competitions, metas, and hopefully being able to use the World Cup viewer for the Overwatch League, that'd be pretty sick. So a couple of weeks ago we sat down with Color Bastion to talk about the boss comp. This is a composition that him, Steve Ooh, and Evil Toaster ran, which consisted of Bastion, Arisa and Symmetra, hence boss, B-O-S. I didn't realise it at first, but also it was called that because Seagull ran into this composition, lost three times in a row and said that it was like a boss battle. We went over exactly how cool it would be to run in competitive, but seeing as we saw it in the open division of NA recently, I figured we'd go into the backstory of how it's been played in the pro scene specifically looking at Atlanta Academy, a team that's been running this competition quite a lot in NA contenders. We'll talk about where it's been used, where it's really good, and the strategies that we use to take it down. But there are some really nice and really subtle plays that have been used in this comp that I most certainly wanted to highlight. So we've introduced what the boss comp is. It's fairly straightforward. You have the Orisa for the shield and damage from a distance, Bastion because Bastion, and then Symmetra being able to use the teleporters to get both of these very immobile heroes around is pretty good, especially when you look at certain points and areas, but the majority of the time, boss comp has been used on second point Hanamura in the pro scene. The most recent example of this came from Open Division of North America, this was broadcasted on Broadcast GG, you can check out all of those lovely people in the description below, but this came from a game between Dogman and ENTR Esports. Dogmen were already 2-0 up when they decided to run this strategy, and it seemed to work very well in their favour. The Dogmen were already on this composition on the first point of Hanamura, as I said they were 2-0 up already so they must have been feeling confident when they went up against Enter. As I said, Enter do eventually get to take this first point and move on to the second one, but Dogmen were always running this composition, so they can easily transition onto the second point where this composition becomes incredibly strong. Why is that? Well, you have two high perches of high ground, and for the most part, teams are going to be coming through the main entrance. So it is a case of Bastion being able to sit on either perches of high ground, shoot from below, or if the enemy team decides to attack from the top right as they're attacking from that bit of high ground, they can transition over to the other one, and it means that nobody can really get to them. Enter Esports started on a guts comp, as does most teams in this meta, but eventually we do get to see them switch off to something that looks more like a dive comp. A lot of time passes and now we're sort of cutting when to enter do eventually take the second point. But it came at the expense of using a lot of ultimates such as a big EMP and a dragon blade that was used to clear up. But that's all besides the point, I'm just talking about literally what's happening on screen. This composition has been used when this pitch is a high ground, the Bastion, Symmetra and Orisa can all sit atop when another team is hoping to run GOATS comp. It means that they literally can't, there's no way for them to physically reach them. But we're just looking at the tier 3 scene with one team clearly being better than the other one in this case. So I wanted to highlight some contenders games. Atlanta Academy quickly became known as the team that ran this in the pro scene. Running it not once, not twice, but three times in total against first generation, Kangana and Enfusion University, all having mixed results. In this game I just wanted to highlight how close this game is, it's one all between Atlanta Academy and First Generation, yet Atlanta Academy is still using this strategy, so it isn't just a throwaway troll pick that they're running. Clearly Atlanta Academy have some respect for this composition and know that it can be used in the right fashion, but it doesn't just enable a Bastion here. You have Dogman running the Ana and you have Ajax running the Zenyatta, both of which are heroes that have no mobility. It's not just a Bastion and the Symmetra that they're getting up to high levels here, having an Ana on a perch of high ground that's very difficult to dive on, and Zenyatta in that case too, is a big keep away strategy that Atlanta Academy are running. First generation yet again have to switch away from GOATS comp to do something else. Not many compositions can do that. This time Atlanta Academy can hold the point completely, then they go on to win that map. Now I wanted to highlight Atlanta Academy vs Kungana. It's a similar thing, the strategy is exactly the same, but Kungana are running their own Symmetra, so you have some crazy moments like this. Now this was a really long set between the teams, but again, Atlanta Academy were able to win with still six minutes left on the clock to get a third. 
But now I want to highlight a time where it doesn't go to plan for Atlanta Academy. They're up against Fusion University who are one of the strongest teams in the world in contenders, never mind just in NA. But I was curious to see how this team really fared against this strategy, knowing full well that Atlanta Academy wanted to run it. Now after some kerfuffling on points with both teams trading, it does actually come out on top for Fusion University that are able to get the picks. You can see how much damage Sugar Free is able to do and how many picks he's able to get. So for Atlanta Academy, it was a case of switching over to the boss comp, right? But you see how quickly Fusion University really jump on this to make sure that it doesn't happen. To the point where Coalescence gets dedicated to try and take this out. The only person that's able to get on the high ground from here, bearing in mind, is the Diva. So Bernard knows in this situation that he is the only one that can go up there and contest it. Alarm knows that there isn't much help that they can give, so they dedicate the Coalescence not only to keep Bernard on the Diva alive, but also just to make sure that that Bastion died. In regards to the rest of the team, the Bastion obviously gets picked. Dogman's jumped up in there too, so that means that Iana's going to die fairly shortly. Sugar Free isn't able to use the teleport themselves, so you can see them sort of behind the point here as Chansik is ready to attack. Snilla is fighting Hawk, so it just means that Atlanta Academy's composition that has to remain together and augmented is completely split. Fusion University knew that this strategy was going to be used. So the amount of time that they had to really nip this boss comp in the bud was limited. So much so that they dedicated ultimates fairly quickly. In any case, they were able to make sure that they staggered off this Atlanta Academy again. And because of that, they were able to take the point fairly quickly. So this leads to one of the biggest counters that this composition has. Expectedness. This composition, much like others, if you're not expecting it, that is where it's most strongest. Much like Bastion on a payload. When those compositions get used, you have to quickly work out exactly how you want to approach this. Fusion University knew that they were going to run a strategy, so they prepared for it and they took it down with ease. Not only that, it takes a while for Atlanta Academy's strategy with a boss comp to get set up with everybody together. So this strategy was twofold from Fusion Uni. Get the Diva on the high ground to contest the Bastion, have Coalescence dedicated to keep them alive, but also having the rest of Fusion University almost having micro fights with everybody else to make sure that this composition that wants to stay completely compact next to each other was too busy fighting their own little battles and they got taken apart very easily at this rate. A lot of people wrote this strategy off saying that it was very gimmicky, and whilst I do agree with that to an extent, the fact that this composition is still being used even in the pro scene, I think deserves its own respect. As I said, not many compositions can make people switch off GOAT Comp, and this most definitely does. The only people that didn't have to switch off of it was Fusion University, but that's because they knew that that strategy was coming. Also, Fusion University are just a very good team in their own right. So it does raise the question, in Overwatch League Season 2, if GOAT's comp is still a thing for Stage 1, is this strategy going to be used more? I most definitely think so. A lot of Overwatch League pros and coaches are saying even with the PTR armor changes going through and the nerfs to Brigitte and D.Va, GOATS is still going to be the strongest composition in the game. Which to an extent makes this composition even stronger in the areas where GOATS comp is very good. But it might be weaker to other comps such as Dive for example. My point being that the boss comp is about to get even better because of these changes. But when you have the switcheroo strategy being used by Symmetra, being able to throw the Bastion and Anna on separate sides, constantly switching to and fro to and fro, it means that playing Dive into this also is quite difficult to an extent. So this composition might actually just get used more and more as teams get used to it. But also as teams do play against it more, they may work out frailties and strategies that might be used. The point I'm trying to make is that I feel that this strategy does deserve a lot more merit than it's getting, at least on the right maps, because this composition isn't going to work all of the time, of course. Much like, you know, quad DPS on Route 66. Time and a place. But much like the Bastion Payload strategy, teams might know just to play more aggressive in some cases to make sure that they nip that in the bud as it's happening. But I am interested in hearing what you think. Have you actually tried this strategy out yourself in competitive? I tried it out once and it went okay. It didn't go badly, but it didn't really go as well as we've seen in these videos. But let me know what you think of this composition and how good it can be in the comments below. And thanks again to Omen by HB for helping to support this video. And I honestly cannot wait for Overwatch League to start up again. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.